I can't hold space for my man anymore. What do I do? Well, that's a big question. How do you define holding space? What does that mean? Let's play out a couple of scenarios. So if you were being an emotional punching bag, if you were holding the weight and the burden of your man's, your partner's unprocessed feelings, his stuff, his pain, his fears, if you are consistently holding them, if he is going to you without having looked at his own stuff, without having processed his own way of being, without having taken responsibility and ownership, sovereignty for what he is feeling inside, what is unprocessed, what is wounded still within him, what is unsettled, what has not been relieved within him. If you are taking the burden of that, there are two things. One, he is you both are codependent with each other. He is depending on you to fix him, to take away his pain, to heal him, to be his mother that he never had, to be the father that he never had, to be that thing in his life that gives him security that's outside of himself and he's over-reliant on you, he's not self-reliant. And the other piece is, what does that feed within you? What is coming up for you? What are you addicted to in that process? Think about that, feel into that. What gives you value to be constantly holding him, to be his savior, to be his hero? Where did you need a hero and a savior in your life? Now that's coming through to you and it's playing out in this dynamic and maybe, just maybe, it's played out in other dynamics. Maybe this is not your first relationship where you are the savior, where you are holding this incredible space this, this big space for your partner and you're tired of it and it's too much and you've had enough and you want reprieve, but you've got to look within and you've got to make requests. You've got to set healthy boundaries. You have to understand what's happening for you. You have to allow your feelings to come through. Who's holding space for you? In masculine feminine polarity, the dominant masculine pole and the healthy masculine pole holds the space. That doesn't mean that women don't hold space. It doesn't mean that men don't hold space. It means that the masculine holds the container, is the container, for whatever is in the container that needs to be expressed and come through. In this case, there's a woman and she is tired of holding emotional space for her partner. He happens to be a man. He's not processing himself. Maybe he's not surrounded by other healthy men where he can get healthy reflections, where he can be mirrored back, what's really going on, where he can be pulled forward, where he can be challenged, where he can be seen, witnessed. Instead of taking that, that need to be witnessed and placing that very heavy burden because the masculine energetic in its unhealthy form can be very tiresome, and very heavy and very big. And it's a big responsibility to hold. And it's not the place of your partner to hold that responsibility. Your partner is not your therapist. Your partner is not your coach. Your partner can help you heal. Your partner is not your healer. Your partner can support you and be there for you. Your partner cannot take away your pain. Your partner can witness you and see you and love you to the best of their ability. And they can hold space for you, but not continuously and not you coming to them in an unprocessed way. You coming to them, expecting them to alleviate your big feelings and your pain and your fear. And as a woman, if you're continuously doing that, you're feeding that beast and you're feeding that dynamic and that paradigm. And so what's happening? You're fortifying that old pattern that is the very wound that you want to break, that you keep perpetuating because you're not setting healthy boundaries. You're probably in lower self-worth and self-esteem. You think that if you can be his savior and his hero, then you will fix him and you are of value. And that's another unhealthy, extreme masculine paradigm as well, needing to fix everything and fix things. Pardon the airplane in the background if you can hear it. Bear with me, stay with it, this is important. I'm gonna repeat myself again. If you are holding that excessive space and you are tired, you have to communicate that. You have to express that. You have to speak to that openly with your partner, heart to heart, eyes to eyes, connect. Let him know what you're feeling. 
Let him know that you're tired. Let him know that you want to break a pattern. Seek support. Get external support. Get a third party helping you, seeing you both, giving you a perspective that you are not seeing for yourself. And give yourself permission to do that. And more importantly, go into this place here and into this integrated body. Breathe and ask yourself, what is my contribution to this? Because if he's not taking responsibility for his stuff and he's angry at you and he's processing his big emotions at you, and maybe it's because he's been fired at work and he's lost his job, or maybe one of his friends said something disrespectful and he's just so angry about it and he's triggered and he's bringing that home to you. There's nothing wrong with him being upset and being angry and being charged and having these big feelings, but if he's projecting that on you and that's a consistent pattern in your relationship and you're just holding that and holding that and holding that and taking it, what is that saying for your self-worth? What is that saying for the dynamic that you're caught up in? What is it saying for your needs that are not being met and you're attempting to have them met through this unhealthy paradigm and dynamic that you're experiencing now in this relationship? And if he's doing that, and if he keeps cutting at you with these big, big feelings and they're unprocessed and he's not self-reliant and he's not taking ownership and responsibility of who he needs to be and he's dumping that on you, it's also disrespectful. It's also a sign of him not being nurtured as a child and lacking emotional intelligence, emotional fitness. That's not a bad thing. That's not a criticism or a judgment. That's an observation. And it's an observation that if you can point that out to him, not that it's your place to point that out to him, but rather if he can see that within himself, he can look at his stuff and say, and vulnerably look at his stuff and say, yeah, I need some work in this area. To dump all of this on my partner because I'm not willing to actually deal with what's underneath the big feeling, whether it's getting fired at work, being criticized, getting frustrated because you're stuck in traffic or you hate your job or you hate your ex-wife and whatever it may be. Or you still, haven't, you still haven't spoken to your father for 12 years. It doesn't matter what it is, whatever the reason, the excuse, the, the thing that's stimulating you, but there's stuff underneath that. Because developmentally, what we experience during our, our formative years influence and impact us as adults, our adult relationships, the way we see ourselves, our big feelings, the way we love, give, receive love, our self-worth, our values, our ideologies, models of reality, beliefs, all of that stuff. And that plays out in our relationships. And most of the time it's unconscious and unknown. And so the opportunity that we have is to dig deep into that. Now, our partners, in a really beautiful way, get to reflect that back to us. They, they can reflect that back to us. But if you're playing out unhealthy dynamics and there's inequity in that dynamic and it's lopsided and we're taking and we're taking and we're taking and we're taking as men and as a woman, in this case, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving and there's no balance there or rather there's no harmony in the give and take exchange, then it's saying something about what's underneath the surface of that dynamic that's playing out. And you have an opportunity to look at that. Journal. Reflect on your thoughts. What are you feeling when, what are you experiencing when your partner continues to dump on you? What does that bring up? What does it remind you of? Is this When my partner dumps on me, it reminds me of dot, 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 dot. When my partner lashes out at me and projects his pain on me, it reminds me of dot, 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 dot. When my partner is relentless with how he's feeling and doesn't take responsibility for his stuff, I feel dot, 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 dot. There are some sentence starters for you, some stem sentences, st sentence prompts, just to go a little deeper. But hey, spend time with a coach, a therapist, a healer, a practitioner, a shaman, a group of friends, someone that can reflect back to you what you cannot see. I have blind spots. I have lots of them. I consider myself a leader in, in the world. I think we're all leaders in our own right, in our own way, global leaders. I consider myself a leader and I consider myself to be a really powerful leader and I have blind spots, many of them. In fact, a couple of days ago, my insecure little boy came out. That five to 12 year old boy, it's a big range. There's a lot of, a lot of pain in that space. I'm very aware of him. I've done great healing with him and some layers are coming up because I'm pushing myself, I'm challenging myself, I'm stretching myself and expanding my sense of self. And as a result, layers are being revealed. And so I have an opportunity to face them and be with them and be vulnerable and truthful with them or I can ignore them. I don't want to do that. In relationship, I don't want to ignore the stuff that comes up between myself and my beloved. And my invitation to you is to not ignore the patterns that keep showing up in your life that are making you uncomfortable, 
They are a wayfinder towards something greater, a greater version of you. Power and blessings to you.